Hi all, in this session we are going to learn about design thinking in a team and how to resolve conflicts and what are the strategies that can be followed to prevent conflicts. First let's understand what is a conflict or how a conflict arises. The best way to perform divergent design is to perform the design thinking as a team process. But the issue arises in this team thinking process is the idea of one person may not look good for another person and there may arise conflicts between the team members. This will create problems and we have to resolve or avoid these sort of conflicts in order to make the product a successful one. So what are the various strategies that can be followed to resolve the conflicts that may arise during the design thinking process in a team environment. Whenever a conflict is arised, first we have to acknowledge that conflict before it can be managed or resolved. The usual tendency in a team environment is the people will ignore the first signs of conflict which will later leads to a severe debate and thus it became a big issue. So first we have to acknowledge the conflict or accept the conflict and we have to prepare a resolution for that. In order to prepare a resolution for that, first we have to discuss the impact. As a team, discuss the impact of the conflict is having on the team dynamics and performance. For example, if one idea is not feasible for other members in the team, then the other members should tell that if you are implementing this idea, there may arise this sort of issues which is not good for our final project or product or they should explain how that particular idea will affect the dynamics or performance of the development team. So by discussing the impact of the conflict in a team environment we can prepare a resolution for that. The other method is agree to a cooperative process. Everyone should agree to cooperate with each other to solve the conflict and accept the fact that the team comes first or the final end product comes first. The individual attention or the individual favor stands apart. So instead of focusing on individual gains, a team should always focus on cooperative process or work together to achieve our final goal. Next is agree to communicate. The most important thing throughout the resolution process is for everyone to keep communications open. Everyone should talk or mingle with each other and they should express their ideas or difficulties while implementing a particular solution and thereby resolve the conflicts arising in the team. The next is understand the situation. So while understanding the situation in conflict resolution, every team member should understand their positions. The opinion or the solution of a senior well experienced person may get higher prior than a new inexperienced person because the person with experience may have already done similar projects and he may be aware with the pros and cons of each solution. So clarify the positions of the people in a team in order to resolve the conflict or disagreement in the team. Every people have their own unique idea or unique view about a particular conflict or a problem but give respect to each other while solving a conflict. Next is list the facts, assumptions and beliefs underlying each position. What does each group or person believe? What do they value? What are the information they are using as a basis for this belief? What basic decision making criteria and process have they employed? All these questions should be answered while resolving a conflict. So when a conflict arises, we have to ask why that particular person is opposing that particular solution or idea. For example, if a person has some ego with another person in the team, he may oppose the other person's idea. So in this case, we can ignore this conflict and we can go up with the proposed solution. So in every case, the team leader should ensure that there should be some valid, strong reason for the disagreement or the conflict. Otherwise, we can simply ignore the conflict. The next is analyze the issue or the conflict in smaller groups. So if a conflict arises in a team, first we have to divide it into smaller groups and the team leader should talk with each of the smaller groups and understand what is their reason for support or disagreement. Next is after analyzing them in smaller groups, the team leader may have got an idea then convene back as a team. So after dividing into smaller groups, and discussing the problem, 
then join back or convene back as the single team then the team leader should convey what are the facts or assumptions explained by each small team and based on that he has to convey the ideas and belief of each smaller team to the whole team and thereby we can understand what is happening in the team while solving a particular problem the next is based on the discussion between the whole team members the entire team should reach to a final agreement and based on that the problem should be resolved so this is how we have to resolve conflicts in a team environment next is how we can prevent conflicts in a team environment first thing is deal with conflict immediately if a conflict arises in the team we have to acknowledge it and we have to ask to that particular member why you are disagreeing with this particular idea and understand their point of view always avoid the temptation to ignore a conflict that arises in a team next is being open every team member should openly talk in the group or in the team and they have to convey or express their ideas openly next is practicing clear communication always express their thoughts and ideas clearly and precisely in the whole team in order to avoid ambiguity while the discussion or the resolving problem next is practicing active listening paraphrasing clarifying and questioning every team member should be a active listener when a conflict arises in the team we have to listen to that particular person who is objecting the solution we have to be active listener to that person and we have to find why he is why he is arising a conflict next is practicing identifying assumptions like asking yourselves why on a regular basis so whenever a conflict is arise in the team we have to ask ourselves why or what may be the reason that particular person may said so asking yourself why is a good way to prevent conflicts or we have to think in the perspective of that other person is a very important thing in order to avoid or prevent conflicts in a team environment next is not letting conflict get personal i have already mentioned that in a team there may be ego between various team members but we should not take these sort of egos or personal revenges in a team environment while developing a particular product or a project next is focusing on actionable solution don't bell about what can be changed sometimes some people may have some solutions which may not be practically feasible to implement so always focus on actionable solutions or solutions that can be done in real time next is encourage different points of view different people have different expressions or feelings or solutions to solve a particular problem so encourage each other we should not tease anyone while expressing their points of view next is don't blame anyone don't look for blaming others always encourage ownership of the problem and solution so if one particular problem is solved by another person we have to encourage that person and we have to give the ownership of that solution to that particular person for example if a person called a solved a problem we have to openly accept the fact that the problem is solved by person a that is what is called like giving the ownership of the solution to a particular problem next is demonstrating respect sometimes in a team environment some person may short tempered and they may get angry and they may talk rudely in a team environment we should not argue with this sort of people we have to take a break and we have to wait for the emotions to settle down and after that we can talk about this particular problem and we can solve it in a peaceful manner so these all are the various practices that can be followed in order to prevent conflicts in a team environment so during design thinking process we have to always try to prevent conflicts in case a conflict is arised we have to resolve that particular conflict and make the final product feasible the designer or the team member should always keep in mind that all these activities are performed in order to make the final product efficient and eff- the success of the final product relies on the shoulders of each and every team member that is the importance of design thinking in a team thank you